Welcome to POE with Mr. Hurd. What we're going to talk about today are gears, pulleys, and sprockets, and why we use them, how we use them, and what kind of uh, uh, math and calculations we can do with them. So basically, gears, pulleys, and sprockets can be used to change the speed of rotation, the direction of rotation, or the amount of torque available to do work. And a gear train is a mechanism, like for instance, whenever you have two or more gears, putting them together, and it makes motion. Give, for example, uh, a complex version of this would be a transmission in your car. Whenever you have two gears, both gears will turn in opposite directions no matter what. To make a gear go in the same direction, you have to add what's called an idler gear in the middle. Another thing we can do is we can take two gears and put them on the same shaft so that we can make a longer gear train out of it so that these two on the same shaft will always turn at the R, uh, same RPM in the same direction. Ratios are easy to figure out and you can do it in one of four ways. Uh, you can do it with the number of teeth, if you know the diameter of the gears, uh, if you know the, the speed, the angular velocity of the gears, or if you know the amount of torque with the gears. So you can measure the ratio with any of this information. The equation that you need to know is that it's out of one, so it's gear ratio divided by one, so it's number of teeth out over number of teeth in, diameter out over diameter in, angular velocity in over angular velocity out, or torque out over torque in. Here's a great example. So here's a gear train where there are four gears in a row. How do you determine what the gear ratio is? We can do between A and B, and so that would be number of teeth out over number of teeth in, 12 teeth over 20 teeth, and that's 0 0.6 to 1. Then for B and C, you can figure out what it is for B and C. It comes out the same way, 0.42 to 1, and from C to D, it's 4 to 1. So what's the total gear ratio? You take all the ratios, you multiply them together, and you get your answer. So if you take a look at this from the, the page before, you take all of these gear ratios, you multiply them together, and you end up with a, a total ratio of one to one. So what's this tell us? It tells us that, that idler gears don't affect the gear ratio. Whatever the first one is and the last one, you figure out what the gear ratio is for those two, and all the idler gears in between don't even really matter. And the, question, the last question, if the last gear had 40 teeth, what would be the total gear ratio? You could go through this whole thing and get two to one, or you could do the same thing and just say 20 and 40, ignore the two in the middle, and you'd get the same answer of two to one. Now a compound gear train is a little bit uh, different. Here's an example of a compound gear train. You have this one in the middle, this is the driver gear driving the yellow gear, and then the yellow and blue one are on the same shaft, and then this blue one goes to the red gear at the end. This allows the final gear to rotate slower. And that multiplies the amount of uh, torque or the gear ratio that you're going to end up having if you have one in the middle on the same shaft. And here's how you'd go about calculating that. You do the 50 to 20, the 50 and the 20, the 40 and the 10, so the 50 and the 20, you get 2.5 to 1. The 40 and the 10, you get 4 to 1. You multiply the two together, and you end up with 10 to 1. So the overall gear ratio for that compound gear system is 10 to 1. Now belts and pulleys, very similar. Uh, same thing, except you have, instead of having gears with teeth, you have pulleys with a belt on them. A lot of these belts now are cogged, and they have teeth on them, so they're sort of like gears. They're no different. They're the same things. Diameter, you can use diameter, you can use uh, torque, and you can use angular velocity. And you can figure out the same thing, the, the, the ratios for all of them with belts and pulleys as well. Sprockets and chains, again, you can use number of teeth, diameter, angular velocity, and torque. Now to compare pulleys to sprockets, uh, pulleys use a belt, sprockets use a chain. Advantages of pulleys are quiet, you don't need any lubrication, they're inexpensive, um, and they're also lighter. Uh, so if, if weight is an issue, pulleys might be what you're looking for. Belts that have, that are, have teeth on them, uh, they still can slip, uh, whereas the chains 
They don't slip. They have a much greater strength. Disadvantages, they're much heavier. They need lubrication and they're higher cost. A lot noisier too.